Um, the key issues for WWF in the next cap reform is uh, first to secure a strong environmental uh, rural development pillar with a minimum spending for the environment. And this is a really, really a key demand for making sure more of the rural development will go to um, agro-environmental measures. Um, the second issue to, is to ensure a meaningful greening of direct payments, the first pillar, um, which is also something extremely important. And um, the third issue is to make sure um, some basic uh, environmental and public health requirements are not deleted. So the, uh, let's say, legal basis is not going backwards and this is at risk. And the, third, the fourth issue and last issue is to make sure um, uh, there are no double illegal subsidies for the farmers when they do the same thing between what the first and the second pillar, they don't get the subsidies twice. Well, what de delivers the most clearly is what is most the best targeted, and this is agro-environmental measures in the second pillar. And this is why we want a minimum spending in the second pillar for these agro-environmental measures. Um, well, then um, the second issue is in, in the first pillar direct payments. We want to ensure there is a meaningful greening, but that's more to reduce damaging uh, uh, agri intensive agriculture. Yeah, this is simply what we call a myth. It means it's not based on any kind of scientific and agronomic evidence. On the opposite, we have seen different researches uh, showing that um, in the midterm, uh, the impact of ecological focus areas, for example, which is the, the key measure of the greening, would lead to an increase of yield by around 4 to 8% by 2020. Uh, second key measure of the greening is uh, the crop rotation, well, crop diversification, but it should be strengthened to uh, be turned into crop rotation. And this is also well documented to increase the yield of uh, the farm. Yeah, there are uh, different attacks that simultaneously risk to completely empty the rural development pillar. The first one is that it has been cut by almost 15% by the European Council, the overall allocation. The second trick is that there is a new um, mechanism called reverse modulation that is introduced by the European Council. You can take between, 20, uh, between 15 and 25% of this allocation and retransfer it to the uh, first pillar, direct payments. And then you have a third measure which is extremely risky. It's called um, income stabilization tool. It's introduced by the Commission in the second pillar and that's as it title says that that's to um, stabilize the income of farmer that can swallow the bulk of the rural development fund but obviously by its very nature it should be in the first pillar not in the second one well so far it's uh, at high risk to be greenwashed uh, almost entirely um, the um, the agri committee in the european parliament has weakened the greening of the direct payments to a point that it's completely meaningless and it also has been attacked and weakened by the European Council. Um, so now it's up to the Agri Council and it's up to the uh, plenary in the European Parliament to really reverse this disastrous trend and make sure they will have the political courage to support a forward-looking um, cap reform. Well, that's the problem. The high risk is that it keeps uh, the business as usual, it stays focused on the big vested interest and there is no vision, which means the same uh, as today will happen, a big loss of uh, small farmers and small farms, concentration of land, farmlands into uh, less and less hands with bigger and bigger farms, which again turns into less uh, jobs in the farming sector. And that's also disastrous for um, the environment because uh, generally these farmers have very intensive practices that are harming the environment.